Hey everyone, Guardian E here with another build and construction video in Azure Lane, and here we have the Karavot of Dawn's Rhyme event. Yes, we have a brand new Northern Parliament event featuring some gorgeous Russian ships, and so that is what we are going to be summoning on today. Naturally, alongside the banner, there's also going to be an assortment of gorgeous skins that we will be covering and reviewing later in the video. I will have timestamps down below if you wish to skip to a particular part of the video. And right now, we're just going to go over really quickly uh, the content of the event. So uh, you are able to get Gromkey as a free ship throughout the course just by collecting these cubes. Um, not wisdom cubes, they're specific cubes to the event as you're doing and completing the story. Um, so that should be a relatively easy endeavor and I believe there are just need a hundred of them and you will be able to get your Grom key for free. Uh, there is the call to arms event, so obviously this is the second phase of that event. So if you're using, um, check the special missions of course to see what the requirements are, but as long as you get enough of this, uh, this particular currency you will be able to get a unique chat frame for the Call to Arms Northern Parliament event. So as you can see, the new chat frame is Seal of Dawn's Rhyme. You can see it right there. And uh, the four boosted ships are Aurora, Saratoga, Hornet, and Sheffield. Uh, clearing certain maps with those ships will yield you, or uh, count towards the quest to yield you the currency that you need to get this chat frame, as well as max limit breaking the event ships themselves. So here we are on the limited rate up banner. As you can see, there is Kirov, Talon, and Silvitskaya Belarusia as the three SRs available on the banner. There is Murmansk and Gramyashche as the two elites on the banner. Uh, all with their separate different rate ups. If we take a look at the actual info for the banner, you can see that, uh, of course, the two uh, rated up SRs are at the standard 2% rate up. Talon is 0.5% because you can get her for free throughout the course of the event from the shop, which is great because Talon was one of my targets for sure. So getting her, you know, having the ability to get her for free is awesome. Gramyashche and Murmansk are each the 2.5% uh, elite standard rate up. Obviously the goal here is going to be to sweep the banner, but at the very least to get all of the ships except for Talon since I can't get her for free. So I certainly wouldn't mind getting copies of Talon here uh, at the 0.5% as just so we can show her off and it will ease some of the grind burden later on. So that's certainly, uh, certainly one plus to that. I have 884 cubes ready to go. These are free farmed grinded cubes. Um, for those of you, I always get this question in the comments that are curious about how you get so many cubes. I will link our free to play cube saving guide. Uh, I'll put up a link and I'll put it in the description as well. Uh, but first and foremost, we have 10 light constructions uh, set up here that we can go over really quickly and just burn through and see if we get. Usually, I like to think of this as a foreshadowing or a sign of, of doom and gloom potentially to come. So let's just see what we ended up getting over the course of the last week. So far, a host of commons. You know what I say? I say that's just us burning all of our bad RNG on the light constructions. That's all this is. Wow, are we going to get 10 commons? No. Wow. Okay, Kiyonami ruined it at the end as a rare. So, But <laughs> but otherwise, that was basically all commons. That's, uh... I'm, I'm going to say that we burned our bad luck there. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So let's get into it. We'll start with a 10 pull. Uh, I don't know the construction times. I never pay attention to the construction times because I'm always just gonna use quick finishers anyway. Um, and then not only that, uh, if I do if I do daily constructions on the banner, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna burn a quick finisher. I'm just gonna wait for the time to run out. So never too worried about that. All right, so far no event ships. I was hoping we could get one event ship on the first ten pole, but this is looking a lot like that light construction ten pole where we got Bubkiss. And yeah, that's uh, a lot of Aoba, though. Interesting. Oh boy, let, let's just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> let's just let's just erase that one from our memories and move on. Let's move on to greener pastures. Next temple, and hope we can't see some. Yes, <laughs> some beautiful Russian ships. And uh, and here she appears. Sovetskaya Belarusia is absolutely gorgeous. Love, love how just grand and majestic she looks here. Her her brilliant blue hair just kind of swirling up behind her. The giant rigging, just very imposing with the those those 
huge blades in their mouths. Love her outfit design, how it's kind of a standard officer's uniform, but just kind of opened up in the front a little bit to give us a nice view, and then also has a kind of a high slit on the side of the dress, just so you get a, a nice peek at her legs and the really ornate design of the boots that she's got there with the cross at the top. Really cool. I, I, I think they did a fantastic job on her, and that's great. She was definitely um, probably my primary target as far as pullable ships, so that's amazing to get her right away. And right out of the gate, uh, we're getting two in a row. Murmansk, that is awesome. Uh, that is actually fantastic. Murmansk, another one of the elites down, looking very cute. Love the fur lining of her outfit, especially above the, the thigh-high boots that she has there. Really kind of nice design there. I actually didn't notice this before, but she has heterochromia. Like, her eyes are a different color. And she also has tails, which I also didn't notice during the preview video. I did notice that she has the, the white and the black tails back there. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. We got two in a row. Can we make it three in a row? No. Nevada says no. But that doesn't mean we can't get another one in this multi. Let's make that a reality. That would be pretty fantastic. <gasps> oh, saw the gold flash. Okay, Takao come into play. That is fine. Hello, Takao. Do not need you, but nice to see you nonetheless. And Portland. And Shropshire. Okay, well, that's a, that's fantastic. Again, not counting the first multi. Um, the second multi was pretty darn good. Right into it. Next 10 pull. I certainly won't mind getting additional copies of Belarusia because I can use that for limit breaking. Uh, of course, our target is going to really more or less be the new ships, though. And I'm eager to dive into the event, get get, get into the story of it, too. See what the what it's going to be all about. Okay, another Murmansk. That is okay. I will take that. Certainly would like to see the other elite make an appearance as well, but that's totally fine. And, ah, elite, but that's a Nelson. Although I do love me some Nelson. Unfortunately, not who we're looking for today. Okay, all right. We did get an event ship. As long as we keep getting event ships, that, that keeps it exciting. I just don't want dead multis. Those are always a bummer. We don't we don't need drags and, and dead multis. Not like that first one. We got that one out of the way. Let's, uh, let's make up for that one with some excellence. That's what we're looking for. Hello, Talon. There we go. That 0.5%. Rate up. The rate up is a lie. Look at her. She looks fantastic. Thank you to everybody who commented in the um, in the reaction video that we posted about the event uh, and and you know how I, I had noticed that she has the red streaks. I mean, she looks very similar to an Iron Blood ship. And people had mentioned that she has a very interesting history, apparently, with being kind of <laughs> tossed around or handed off to different factions over time and being rebranded, renamed. Um, so that is why she has kind of these iron blood roots, which is a, a nice touch in her design overall. And, and generally speaking, I mean, she's beautiful. She looks absolutely fantastic. And how the rigging behind her is just kind of exploding forward, just beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So that is very exciting. Despite her being available in the event shop, we are going to be able to get her here, which is fantastic. Uh, it saves me some grinding and we get to show her off in the video, which is always, always a plus. All right. Nice, so that's two SRs, one Elite down. At this point, we're just missing one Elite and one SR. <laughs> There's another Murmansk. Is she going to be the stalker of today? I mean, she's an adorable stalker, but at the same time, uh, I need her to bring the uh, the other Elite along, please. That would be much appreciated. Back into it, diving under 800 cubes now. We are uh, no longer in the 800 plus club. Let's see if we can't finish things off here. Okay, so far looking pretty dry. I always like Sussex. Alba, oh, I have enough. Of, I just burned a whole bunch of you or sent you uh, <laughs> sent you home. I don't need any more. I feel like whenever we get Alba, we end up getting dead multis. Is that is that a thing now? Is that is that how is that how it's gonna be? All right. Well, after the last dead multi, we had an amazing multi afterwards. So let's see if we can make that happen again. An SR and an elite in a row. The two ones that I'm missing. That's what I want to see here. Can we make it happen? Can we make it happen? Please, Akashi. Please, Nelson again. Nelson, you're not on rate up. You're not. You're not. Look at the numbers. You're not <laughs> renowned. All right, we got two elites in a row. The elite rate, I believe, is 7%, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. 
Well, we did, uh, we just got Talon, who is a sister ship to Prince Eugen, so I guess this is pretty appropriate. Uh, Prince, I love you, but don't need you right now. Do not need you. Alright. And Mermonsk. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. So it's gonna be one of those, is it? Gonna be one of those. I, I, I see how you're playing things, Akashi. I see how you're playing things. All of these Murmansk. Okay, there we go. There we go. Gramasche, I think, is Gramasche is I think is how you pronounce it. I'm sorry. I'm sure I'm butchering all of these names. But uh but that is the second elite. So we have cleared the elites, and at this point we are just missing one SR, which is fantastic. Um this ship is super cute. I mean I love the huge billowing design of the dress. She kinda has a wing, uh, like an angel wing off to the side, which is really cool. Uh, and the oversized sleeves is always adorable. So yeah, that's great. Another elite down. And again, we are who? I saw that golden flash. I believed for a second, but I will absolutely take another Sylvetskaya Belarusia. She looks fantastic and uh, brings a smile to my face whenever she appears. So, okay, so now this elite is going to keep appearing. Is that is that this game that, <laughs> that Akashi toying with my heart here? All right, so we just need one elite left. Okay, Erebus. And Queen Elizabeth. We're getting a lot of elites, actually. I gotta say. Interestingly enough. Alright, I just retired a bunch of ships. I think after this 10 pull, we're gonna slow it down, do some 5 pulls. Just to mix it up. Just because I'm feeling... Feeling like, like having a quick change. Obviously, RNG is RNG. It doesn't actually change anything. Sometimes you just have to mix things up for your own sanity. How many Shropshires did we just get? How many, how many Shropshires do we just get? Oh, it's Alba, of course. It's Alba, the, the death sign. Alba being the death note. As soon as I get Alba, that means we're not getting anything in this. Got a York and an Oklahoma. Yep. She is, she is quite literally the death sentence. I don't know what it is about her in this banner, but she is making things difficult. All right, five pull. Our SR rate has been okay. We've gotten like, Five SRs, I think. And... Yeah, I think so. We've gotten slightly more event SRs than non-event SRs. Which is what you would expect. Alright. Another five pull. Come on. Indy. Indy Chan. Oh god, it's an Alba. That's a bad sign. It's an Alba. Prove me wrong, Alba. Nope, you're not going to prove me wrong, because I was right. I was right. Death Sentence Alba. Now, despite having a ton of cubes, I don't want to burn that many here, because I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to be getting another UR uh, in the relative near future. They said that they wouldn't introduce a new UR um, after Shinano until the next year, and we are well into the next year. So, I mean, I would expect to hear some news in the relative near future about the next SR. Which, for newer players out there, if you are not aware, the, uh, the U or the UR, I should say. Um, if you're not aware, URs were a relatively recent addition, um, outside of PR research, of course, uh, that you could summon for that have a 1.6% chance. Oh my god. Belarusia, I love ya. I love ya, but please, please bring along... Kirov. That is who we are looking for right now. I would very, very much appreciate if you didn't bring her along. Or if you did bring her along. I'm sorry, if you did bring her along. Please bring her along. We want to see her with her new design. She is redesigned, interestingly enough. I, I don't know the story behind that necessarily. If they just felt... I think maybe the original design felt a little bit too similar to the other ships and they decided to, like, mix it up. I mean, I'm not... Oh, there we go. Whew. Whew. Last, last of that five pull. Here we go. We are getting Kirov. So like I was mentioning, she's actually, she actually got a redesign from uh, the, her story presence before. Uh, I think they just changed it up a little bit, like her skirt design and the, uh, the outfit itself, her stance. So I think they just wanted to mix it up to differentiate her a little bit more. I, I don't actually know. I mean, maybe there was some other conflict, but... And regardless, she looks fantastic here. I mean, there's no denying that. She's striking this strong, confident pose, the, her cape just billowing out the, behind her. I love the pleated skirt. That's always really nice with the dark leggings underneath. She has that bi-split strap there that's just kind of squeezing her thigh a little bit. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, she looks awesome, great design, and with that, we have swept the event banner. So, Karavot of Dawn's Rhyme is swept. The limited time rate up is clear. We have gotten all of the event ships, and from this point forward, we are basically going to be doing um, like light constructions, maybe some sprinkled -in event constructions for our dailies, and that is basically it. Definitely took a decent hit to the old cube count, but I was prepared, so um, we are coming out of this, and we are going to be able to rebuild that stash. Um, throughout the course of this event. But of course, things aren't over yet. At this point, we are going to transition to the store right now, the skin store, to take a look at some of the absolutely phenomenal skins that they dropped with this update. All right, now out of the gate, I will say that this skin set's theme is, is something along the lines of like, lounging about on a lazy day indoors, away from the cold, very appropriate for the winter, right? Uh, which is a far cry from the original Northern Parliament set that we got last time with Northern Overture which was based on the Gulag. Uh, certainly this is a more comforting approach to the skins. So what I think I'll do is I'll go through each of the skins that I'm not buying or renting uh, one at a time, and then afterwards, when we buy each of the skins, we'll take a much closer look at those skins, uh, as well as just give my evaluation of them. So starting things off, we have Talon with Nostalgic Pilsner. Now, I just adore the lackadaisical and just kind of laid-back pose here. Her hair is just slightly tousled. It looks like maybe she's just kind of taking a breather, you know, taking a load off. I love the casual off-shoulder look of the top. It gives us a nice peek of her bra, the bare midriff, the short shorts, and those thigh highs that are just digging gently into the softness of her skin. She has a guitar off to the side, which implies that maybe she was, uh, maybe she was just playing a set, or, um, I mean, there's like a paper and a pen on the desk there, so maybe she was writing some music, you know, maybe she was writing some tunes, getting some inspiration from, from this relaxing winter day, I don't know, but I think this skin is great, I think it captures, captures a story, which I'm always very into with these skins. Next up we have Kirov with Blend R, I, I don't know if that's insinuating that this, uh, this coffee is like a Russian blend, but it certainly looks, certainly looks tasty, it looks like she's getting up for a morning coffee, uh, looking over at us, inviting us for a cup as well. I love the luxurious long ponytail that she has. I really dig the the outfit. She, it looks like she has kind of a button down that's just kind of off of her shoulders and on her back, and then over top a some more casual, uh, comfy sleepwear that she's wearing. It's loose fitting and comfortable, but at the same time giving us tantalizing glimpses of all the right areas. I definitely get a very warm, welcoming, homey feel from this one. Here's Gromyasche in a daytime delight is in a book. Uh, she has this really cozy, sleepy time look here. Very, very cuddly, just curled up with a book. Uh, she even has a sleep cap on her head. <laughs> uh, looks like she's just totally absorbed in that story, which uh, is certainly not the first book. It seems like there are books piled high all around her, uh, as well as an assortment of really comfy looking cushions. I really like the delicate pastel color palette uh, of the overall skin, just kind of adds to that comforting theme. Pretty nice. Now, Murmansk is uh, looking out the window in sceneries of pure snow, seemingly unconcerned at her state of undress and her bare backside nearly exposed there. Uh, she's admiring the beautiful fall of snow while we're admiring the beautiful view from behind. Uh, and she's just kind of tracing a, a heart on the window, uh, the fog of the window, which is super cute. Uh, I really like that uh, off to the side there, you can see that her outfit is is on the stand. You can see that that's her uniform that she usually wears. And, you know, she's just kind of looking back at us, just inviting us to take a closer look. At the snow, that is. I meant the snow. Um, and there's just a certain gentleness to this skin that makes you feel very cozy. It's very nice. Next, we've got Gromke Morning's Beckoning. Uh, it's bright, vibrant, sunny colors, uh, just cute and energetic. Looks like she's getting ready for the day and uh, and waking us up, and maybe we're holding her back for some, from some daytime fun, and she's she's not having any of it. She's pointing at us accusingly. Um, like the uh, little bear symbols on the balloons to the side that's being held up, I think by a manju, if I remember the preview. But uh, yeah, I, I think this is a cute one. Next up, we have Pamiat Mercuria Sweet Cherry Memories. Seems like Mercuria is... Uh, is taking a load off from a, a hearty day of VTubing, um, but I think the skin is overall just very cute. I love that giant Manju beanbag chair that she's curled up in. They really need to sell those. I kind of want one of those right now. Um, she's enjoying, uh, looks like some cherries there. I know that there was a cup of noodles. Yeah, you can kind of see it down there because I saw that in the preview as well. So she's, she's having cup noodles and cherries, which is kind of a weird combination, um, but I guess, I don't know. Maybe that's supposed to... In 
that's supposed to insinuate that these are like, again, lazy day. Maybe that's all that they had and she's just kind of having a snack. Um, just like the comfy oversized sweater that she has. Got that cute black hairband uh, on her head with a bow. And yeah, she's just kind of chilling there, you know, for a quiet night in. Next up, we have Grozny with Bunny Remodeling Plan. Uh, this is another really cute one. Again, it looks like she has an oversized uh, button down that she's wearing just to relax indoors. Away from the cold, you can see the frigid cold outside. She has that sleepy cap on um, and she has some, some Nekos, some cats around her to keep her company as well as the Manju. Looks like she's got some delicious looking pancakes with some strawberries and blueberries there. And she's drawing something, so she's remodeling. I don't know what that... I don't know exactly what she's remodeling, but it looks like she's just enjoying some comfort food while while staying uh, warm and indoors. Now, if we look at the chibi, it looks like the hat actually has some some bunny ears on it. I'm not entirely sure. You can't really see it too well now that I'm now that I'm kind of looking at it. Um, and then there's also a giant paw cushion behind her. I don't know if that's a cat cushion, like a cat paw or a bunny paw. I don't know, but uh, regardless, it's, it's it's pretty cute. Next, we have no snow, no life with uh, Stremi Telny, she's showing there is nothing quite like a lazy day. Uh, soft cushions are everywhere, just snuggly pillows and blankets. She's got that big, uh, warm, comfortable sweater, uh, along with that awesome eye mask that's on her head, really cute. Uh, bonus points, because she's playing that PS1 there, and uh, I, don't, I can't really tell what she's playing on that CRT, but uh, if any of you have any ideas out there, let me know in the comments, I'm, I'm curious. It looks like the PS1 has a little Manju symbol on it. Um, and, you know, maybe she's inviting us to play a game with her? I don't know. I feel like that's that's a particular element of all of these skins that's that's kind of cohesive. And um, really what is so alluring is that they're, they're very welcoming and inviting skins that, um, that kind of draw you into them and into their world. We've got Tashkent with the blue snoozer. A giant, huge stuffed bunny behind her. She's got this oversized shirt, the button-down shirt again. It seems to be, again, a common common garment that a lot of these ladies seem to be wearing to sleep or maybe wearing when they first get up from sleep. Uh, I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but um, I like that there's a giant bunny there and she kind of has the bunny ears as well. Very cute. Uh, she's surrounded by an assortment of other stuffed animals. You have a bear, you have a swan or a, or a goose. Um, and she has a cute little blush on her face as well as she's getting ready for the day. So finally, let's take a look at my current top picks of the set. Uh, we'll start things off with Gangoot, Keeper of the Firewater. Let's go ahead and pick this one up. Absolutely beautiful. Bwah! I have had all kinds of liquor, but nothing beats the stuff back home. Comrade, let's have a toast to the coming off-duty days. I Off-duty, I feel like that is really kind of, again, the, the central theme of these skins. And she looks absolutely gorgeous here. We're going to take a closer look at this one. But Gangoot's skin was one of my favorites, actually, from Northern Overture, back when it was the Gulag theme. And, uh... And she and her artist really deliver again with this exceptional piece. So let's go ahead and toss this on her. So unfortunately, it's not live today. None of these skins are. Uh, and I don't think she has any specific voice lines, at least yet, for this skin. Keeper of the Firewater, we get to see the softer side of Gangoot. And it is very soft indeed. Soft, sultry, warm, and inviting. She's just kind of luxuriously sprawled out on the curls of her long silver hair here. Uh, her supple, shapely bare legs just kicked up and on display. I mean, she has those exquisite curves of her figure just scooped up in that tiny and slightly transparent black lingerie. Uh, you know, in the foreground, she has just an assortment of, like, drinks and bottles of liquor. It looks like she's got a, a, a Toons magazine or a Time magazine there. If we pan up here, you can see that there's natural lighting flooding in through the window up there, and you have a whole host of liquors up at the top as well. But yeah, I think the soft, natural lighting just gives everything a very homey feel. I mean, you can even see the, like, slight rainbows here as the light is kind of streaming in. It's it's really cool. It's a, it's a really nice touch, I think. But yeah, Gangoot was one of my, uh, I think, underrated favorites from the Northern Overture event, and I am certainly happy to get this skin for her. She looks stunning in it and absolutely fabulous. Next up, we've got some rental tickets to use. We'll start off with Chapayev with White Cavalier's Respite. Let's go ahead and grab this one. So I just want to try it out to see if I'm actually going to get it, but she really does look absolutely amazing here. Uh, phew. Oh my, Commander. I'm sorry I didn't welcome you at the door. You don't have to be so tense. I already know not to try doing anything weird with you. <laughs> yeah, it does seem as though Chapayev has some uh, some kinky tendencies uh, based upon her love lines, I think. 
Um, but, you know, she's, she's keeping them reserved for the uninitiated, I suppose. So we'll go ahead and put this on her. So Chapayev is clearly on the prowl as this seductive temptress, and she fits the role perfectly. Uh, the icy blue of her hair and the the silky white of her negligee just creates this this kind of harmonious combination uh, naturally she's kind of nearly spilling out of this slinky outfits top and this very short hemline you know, I really like uh, you know the thigh strap that you have here as well as kind of the lace headband up top you know mixing in that lace is always a nice touch uh, and she has a really random assortment of things on this bed like I, like there's a makeup kit over here and then there's cupcakes on the side that look delicious she's got a glass as well as um, some donuts and um, she's spilling something here there is something dripping we're not we're not going to get into that probably like lotion or something but regardless it's just like a random assortment of stuff and i guess that's because you stumbled onto her she was kind of like in the middle of something here it's a little unclear what her plan was exactly uh, but uh you know maybe maybe the on theme here is is that this is just how she gets comfortable you know she just happens to be wearing some very risque lingerie, but this is just, you know, she's just relaxing with some some snacks and some books and some, some makeup and <laughs> whatever else is here. Um, because after all, you know, while this skin is very, very heavy on the seductive and the provocative, um, she also is wearing these very, very comfy slippers off to the side here, right? And then overall behind her, there's this absolutely breathtaking backdrop of snow and mountainous ice. I really, really beautiful, and you know, it, it kind of makes the warm candlelight in the forefront and the foreground just feel that much brighter and warmer, um, and, and the overall like ambiance cozier, I guess. I don't know, but this is definitely a really gorgeous skin. I am tempted to pick it up and splurge those orbs. I already have a Chapayev skin, which is the only reason why I'm kind of hesitating, but this one is definitely on the table as, a, as an option. And then finally, we are going to be renting Sovetskaya Belarusia's Relaxation Stratagem. So let's grab this one. To pass the time by proactively reading, or by passively enjoying the company of others. Ah, good morning, comrade. I've been expecting you. Ha ha ha. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and toss this on her and see what it's all about. So let's take a closer look at Sovetskaya Belarusia here. Uh, who is apparently captivated in that book that she's reading. Uh, apparently some research, I guess, based upon her, her opening text or her opening line. Uh, and she slipped into what is really uh, a far too ravishing black negligee for some casual reading. Um, it definitely doesn't, doesn't feel that appropriate for the activity. I mean, you've got this plunging neckline, straps just tracing the sides of her spectacular ample bust and, and running down her cleavage as well. The sides of the skirt there ride on high up her hips, just revealing this irresistible combination, a proven combination of garter and stockings, which fits her perfectly. Uh, the black of the outfit obviously creates this, this very beautiful and eye-catching contrast with her soft, creamy skin. And she has that cute little white ribbon in the front, got lacy accents all around. Yeah, you know, I think that the icing on the cake is actually the cute little collar and wrist cuffs that she has, because they're matching. You notice how they have little white bows on them and lace and just really nice detail, like straps as well. Really well designed and well put together. Um, you know, and that majestic azure mane that she has that was you know, twisted up in this torrent of wind in her regular art is just kind of like resting and strewn all around her. Uh, you get a real sense of its size and volume. I really like the flared out kind of layered look to her hairstyle as well. You don't really get a good sense of that in her regular art either, um, but it's you know, full on display here. Uh, and it looks like she has, I guess like a little MacBook, <laughs> like a, a Manju MacBook, uh, some coffee, that the manju is stealing there. Got some, again, a fur throw that she's on that looks really comfortable, uh, as well as, you know, some some comfy cushions. And I like, the, again, the muted colors of the, of the furniture just makes her hair and her eyes just that much more striking with this vibrant blue. Uh, it's just really nice. I, and I didn't even notice this but before, but in the back there, it looks like there's a little bear symbol that is uh, drawn with a finger on the, um, on the window. I don't know if it's implying that she did that. It feels a little out of character, but maybe it could have a, like a cute side to Belarusia, uh, or if it was like maybe one of the other ships that she uh, that she lives with. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's absolutely gorgeous, and this is another one that I am extremely tempted to pick up. I just haven't decided yet to pull the trigger, but we all know I probably will. Now right, let's try a little head pat action. Your little hand gestures have no effect on me. <laughs> 
I mean, she seems she seems pretty pleased by it still. I mean, maybe it doesn't have a full effect on her, but I think she likes it. Uh, and we'll just do a little special touch. Uh, what did my revealing outfit cause you lapse in judgment? Yes, it has caused me to open my gem count and just splurge everywhere. I, I like the um, the heart irises that she has when you do the special touch. It's a nice expression. Definitely, uh, definitely a fan. All right. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. As if that wasn't enough. Let me know in the comments below how you did on the Caravot of Dawn's Rhyme uh, limited time raid up banner. Hopefully you got all of the ships that you were looking for, or uh, if you're doing daily constructions and doing three per day, which is the smart thing to do, um, that you have the best of luck in your daily pulls. Also, please feel free to let me know what skins you decide to purchase, if any. I'd be curious to know what your selections are. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Azure Lane content. We thank you all so much for watching and for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really, really do appreciate it. Certainly hoping you're all staying safe, healthy, secure, and united out there and wishing the very, very best for you, your family, and your friends. And until next time, let's protect those waters.